Good morning. It's Jim Dodson, the Florida Bike Guy, your bicycle injury and personal injury lawyer uh, in Florida. So are you safe in lightning on your bike? Um, I was so prompted to ask this question this week because there was a really a sad situation that occurred on I-95 here in Florida of a motorcyclist who was riding in a apparently in a lightning storm and was hit uh, by lightning as he was riding on his motorcycle and crashed and died. And there's some question whether the lightning took his life or whether the effect of the crash took his life. But it made me wonder, so, you know, we as cyclists face this issue all the time. And I was talking to a client of mine uh, in Central Florida this this week, and I, I asked this question, so what do you do when, when lightning is out? This person said, well, I'm safe on my bike because I've got my tires there insulate me against uh, against lightning. So I, I thought, well, you know, I don't think that that's accurate. Let's look this up. So I did some research on it. And the consensus seems to be that uh, your tires on your bike are going to offer zero protection against lightning. They're not enough to uh, ground you or insulate you against lightning finding its way to the ground through your body. It's really no different than, you know, expecting the sole of your shoe, which is probably thicker than your bike tire, to ground you if you're walking as a pedestrian. Uh, so the word seems to be in the research that I did that we as cyclists are no safer than a pedestrian when it comes to being struck by lightning. Um, I think that and one of the biggest myths that is out there is that you know, we're safe because we have these tires that uh, ground us as we ride. Um, and I think there's an also, it's the research seemed to indicate that it's a myth that the tires on your car actually ground you. They're apparently we're safer in our cars because of what they call the, Par the Faraday um, uh, theory or whatever. That, But it's actually the fact that we're encased in metal and the way it distributes the power of the lightning around the car if the car gets struck. Uh, I think the takeaway that I want to leave cyclists is that, you know, we are entering, this is now, I'm taping this in uh, June. We're entering into the true summer season. We've had a tremendous number of uh, thunderstorms around us already this year. Uh, many of us take long bike rides during the summer months, and we can be a long way from home. Um, and what do you do if lightning comes up? Um, when I was a golfer a few years ago, I was just astonished at people that would be standing on the golf course swinging a metal golf or a long golf club with the lightning coming, you know, and doing nothing about leaving the course or people that are piling onto the beach and doing nothing about clearing the beach when a lightning storm is coming. I've lived in Florida all my life. I've had enough experiences with lightning. I've got a healthy respect for it because it's fatal if you get hit. It doesn't even have to be hit you. It can just be close enough and the effects of the power can be fatal for us. Um, and as cyclists, we just have to remember that we're no safer than we would be as a pedestrian. Um, my son lives in Salt Lake City and he just had an experience last weekend with lightning. He was on a trail ride up there near Park City and a um, huge thunderstorm came in. Really, we had a similar experience. We were in North Carolina one time hiking with crashing lightning all around. And uh, he took shelter and got got away from it, just like we did when we were there several years ago when he was in college. Um, but it can be a frightening experience. And I think that we just need to be heads up. You don't want to continue just riding. Uh, if you have an opportunity to get low, uh, you don't want to get on the ground. You want to get close to the ground. You want to crouch. If you're riding in a group, you don't want to all huddle together. You certainly don't want to huddle around a tree or around a metal pole. You need to disperse the group in the event that one person gets hit Others will be there to render aid to that person. You don't want to all get affected by one strike. Um, those are just some considerations to bear in mind uh, if you're faced with a situation where you have lightning coming around you. It's interesting to me, though, you know, I asked Kelly, who's our intern for the summer. So, Kelly, can you find one documented case of a cyclist being struck by lightning in the news now? And we couldn't find any. There's a reference to one that she found in Croatia, but we couldn't find the story to verify it. At the same time, I found myself that there's been at least six documented situations in Florida of motorcyclists being hit by lightning. So 
I just think we all have to act reasonably. We, we have a great sport. We want to leave and have a great time. We want to come back healthy. Um, remember that we'll just dispel that myth about your tires providing insulation. Um, have a healthy respect for it. Do what you can to avoid it and enjoy the sport that we love so much every day. Um, we have an offer for you today. Uh, Katie's running on the on the screen for joining up with our newsletter at the bit.ly link is FL Bike um, NL for newsletter. This is my current newsletter, which is going to go out uh, this week. And, you know, I invite you to join this some 3000 cyclists across Florida who receive our newsletter monthly. It informs and inspires. I think it's. I think you'll find it interesting. If you're not on our mailing list, I urge you to to join. You can do it electronically, or we'll send it to you by print. Uh, but take the time. I, I think we'd love to stay in touch with you. Um, I'm Jim Dodson, the Florida Bike Guy. I'm a bicycle injury and personal injury lawyer in Clearwater, but we represent clients throughout Florida. Take care and have a good day. Bye.